good. Now I've just got a few questions to ask you. Okay. And the first one is, what were appliances like um, when you were younger? Oh, very few appliances. Um, we certainly didn't have refrigerators. We had what we call cool garden safes or a meat safe that you hang up around the back under a tree. Uh, didn't have washing machines. Uh, you simply washed up. Well, we had a sink that we used to wash up in, but um, other people would wash up in a bucket and a trough. Um, appliances. Um, we certainly didn't have um, um, vacuum cleaners. Uh, or food cleaners, I'd say that. Or um, televisions. Uh, we just made our own phone. So, um, um, one of the questions I have to ask you is, how did you, how did you, um, uh, like vacuum? Like, if you had carpet, how would you get rid of all the stuff that was on it? Oh, we used the uh, school broom. We used to sweep the carpet every week, I suppose. With the school broom and the uh, lino floors with a soft broom, hair broom. And sometimes we used to put the carpet, it was only a small carpet. Put it out on the clothesline and bang it. It oh, was really? a carpet and wall to wall, we naturally couldn't do that. Yeah. Now, um, I heard that you were actually in the war. What was um, the war like when you were in it? Like, did you feel angry or sad? Did you miss your mum and all them? Well, I think uh, the war had been going sometime before I joined up. Um, to answer your question, I don't think I felt very angry about it as an experience. Uh, well, we were there with a lot of other people doing a lot of training, and um, I was fortunate in one way that I only had a very short time in New Guinea. The rest of us in the, in the services were about uh, three and just over three and a half years. And of that time, I suppose, nine months I spent in New Guinea. Now, um, while I was there, I was in the mobile meteorological unit attached to the Six Devi, and we used to give um, forecasts to the uh, commander of the Six Devi, and uh, used to go out with the artillery and um, give them the um, forces of the winds and the direction of the winds each hundred or each thousand feet made a tremendous difference to the firing of the, the guns. Mm -hmm. um, and how were things back then when you were about my age, about 12? What things in my house and things in the um, district? In school. Um, things in when I was your age, I was at school and my father was a doctor and um, we had quite a good life. Um, I lived up in the country, the place called Nile West, north of Swan Hill, on the Murray, and uh, a lot of fruit growing there, a lot of dried fruits and uh, oranges and um, and further up beyond the irrigation scheme, they had a lot of wheat growing. And um, we had a good, um, when I was your age, we had a good childhood. And um, I think then when I went down to boarding school, uh, which I'm my faction, was a good, good time, I thoroughly enjoyed that. And then I uh, went on to secondary school and um, uh, used to ride our bikes to the Melbourne Grammar every day. But um, I forgot what the question was. <laughs> um, what did you use for entertainment like when you were my age? For entertainment, we used to well, play games that, uh, during the day and um, all sorts of games for the cricket. Um, when they were girls, I suppose we used to play such games as Tiggy and so on. And um, for entertainment, well, we, we had pictures once a week in the hall. Um, they were black and white pictures. Um, 
The um, Fabi guy used to practice every week during, particularly during the Sunday months, and uh, used to go out and watch them running up and down, and used to go along and help them putting things down and um, doing their practices. Um, yep. If there was um, any burning off or a fire, we used to do our best to go and um, Go over the fire trucks and see how we go. See how we go. And what was your first job? First job when I left school uh, was working in the was an office job working in the New Zealand Land and Mercantile Agency over wool brokers in Collins Street and had um, branches all around the state and all around the country. It's quite a big firm. And when the wool sales were on, of course, you were there about 8 o'clock in the morning and you rushed out to catch the last train up there. <coughs> and yeah. um, uh, the first job I had, I got the Prince Street summer of 17 or 3 a week. And it'd be about um, um, dollar seventy-five, I suppose. Now. Yeah, that's not very much money. Yeah, and what, what did you enjoy your job? I didn't, well, I enjoyed it up to a point, but I didn't want to stay there. But um, um, no, I didn't enjoy it. Yeah. yeah. Um, how did the um, 1930s depression affect you if it did? <clears throat> well, I don't, when I was only a kid during the 1930s depression. By well, 1930, I suppose I'd be about eight or nine years old. But um, as I mentioned, my father was a doctor, and I guess the depression affected everybody, but uh, it didn't affect us very much, that, that much at all. I must say that my best friend at the state school, he was a, his father was the chief of the Sussex Games, as they were known, uh, chief of the unemployed people. And um, there was quite a difference in the town between the employed people and unemployed. And um, it seemed to be some people took it rather uh, surprising that the doctor's son, and the doctor, of course, was one of the most important people in the town during those days. It was amazing that the doctor's son and the, um, one of the worst of the unemployed. Uh, Two boys with great friends together. Yep. And, um, um, I must say, too, with the early, with the 1930 depression, there were a lot of people coming around begging, uh, food, of course, and, uh, a lot of swaggies around the place, and quite often you'd go out in the morning and find your meat safe and being robbed, or your tour garden safe and being ready to eat. Yep. And how many brothers and sisters did you have? I had one brother and uh, one stepsister. All right. And what was your mother? Did she work or was she just sort of at home? Well, my mother, my brother's mother, my mother died a couple of days after I was born. Mm. But my stepmother, she was a um, sister to my matron. And I lived for about the first 10 years of my life in what is known as a private hospital. <laughs> Mum was a matron and dad was a doctor. And of course, at times we had to be very, very quiet when we were sick patients in the uh, bed in the rooms. Oh, and um, when did you decide that you wanted to become a uh, sister? Uh, my decision, when did I decide? Uh, I was sitting in St John's Church in Tarak, and there was a visiting preacher one day, and um, he used to be out there every week. And this chap, Reverend F.A. Ray, was talking about the work of the church in the slums. And um, while he was preaching, I heard a voice, a strong man's voice behind me saying, that's where I want you to work, my boy. And I turned around to see who was speaking. And my auntie, who was in the church, 
to stay me very much just the top of the knee. I had to look at at the time, and I was told you don't turn around in church, and you sit and listen to what is being said. And I, was, I can still hear that voice. That is what I, where I want you to be the sun. That's what I want you to be in the book. And um, it was a wonderful call of God to the ministry of handmade and calls to the Uh huh. And how did you feel when you heard this? Were you happy or were you a bit upset? I heard it. Mm hmm. I was a bit amazed because um, I was, when we grew up, we. Uh, our mother, and my mother, and stepmother, ruled us all with a lot of eye. It wasn't very much love or sympathy. And uh, I've been told ever since I was a knee height or grasshopper that I was going to be adopted. And uh, I didn't want to be adopted. I was always you know, about the middle to the bottom of the class in the marks at school. And um, I didn't have the brains I knew from when I was four or five or six in the given school, I just didn't have the brains to be adopted. I didn't want to be one, but um, when I had this call to the ministry, um, I just couldn't mention it at home. And uh, I remember when I was about 15, my family moved to a place called Winchester, and uh, there's a one woman there, the wife of a bank manager, he was in your life, and mum, and I used to play tennis with her and two boys. And um, I told her one day I was thinking of going to the ministry, and um, she was through the year ago. And uh, later on that week, I got summoned into my father's room by my mother. And my mother said, What's this I hear about you going into the ministry, wanting to go out of the ministry? Um, Is that so? Yes or no? And I said, Yes. She said, well, get that idea right out of your head, right away. You're going to be a doctor. And um, uh, make sure that you get that idea right out of your head. Now get outside and forget all about being a minister. All right, man. That must have been pretty upsetting. Oh, it was. So well, I knew that um, all along the line that I've been told that I was going to be a doctor. And um, he just did. My father was a doctor, my grandfather was a doctor, all my uncles were doctors. My grandfather's name, surgeon, his, his name's up in the um, Alfred Hospital. So mm -hmm. And also, how old were you when you got called? When I got called, I was about 13. All right, so you, you did sort mm -hmm. of get, yeah, you did sort of like get an early start, you went sort of, Told me at 20 or anything. Uh, but uh, oh, I was still wearing short pants, I remember that. <laughs> um, what was your wedding like and how old were you when you got married? Oh my goodness. Um, the wedding, it was a lovely wedding. Uh, the wife wore a grey, grey tube frock, not white, and she had a bridesmaid and um, this man, and uh, Mary's um, vicar married us, and uh, I was a curate at the time, and uh, my boss, my vicar, and his sister. Um, wedding was at St. George's, at um, St. Oswald's Ben Rose, and uh, we were married by the woman Fred Porter. Um, the wedding. She spent all the days before the wedding going around the streets it was during the autumn months on the 1st of May we were home and uh, Mary was there collecting um, autumn leaves and branches to put in the church as they did in the church. Um, the reception was held at the Athenaeum Club in the city. Uh, my Mary's aunt uh, was a member there and uh, there's another quite good reception. Um, I don't know what else I'm talking about the wedding. Um, my brother was my best man. Mm -hmm. yeah, and um, how old were you when you got married? Oh, I must have been about two. Alright. Yeah, and how old were you um, when, when you found out you became a father? How old was I when I became a father? Oh, 
suppose, uh, another two years later. Alright, so you didn't wait too long. Yeah. That's a good thing. And what was your first car like? Uh, the first car was a very old, a very sedate sedan with the lights. And um, I, I, as I say, I, as I, I had to have something respected me to drive around the garage. So I, I paid for it and um, I've been driving my mother's car before that. And um, I think there's a greeny car and a uh, double seater and uh, has the same as a sedan. And um, it's, it's a small one. Mm -hmm. Did you did you like the first car? Yes. Um, oh, I like well, it's like all the cars, but um, <laughs> I've got no special attachment or love for the first car that I had. Uh, and also, um, what, um, when you had your friends around, was your car? Did you sort was your car better than theirs? And did you sort of sort of like tell them and make fun of them or something, or was their car better than yours and you just, they did the stuff to you? How did it I think that most of us at that stage uh, were a bit on the poor side and many of us had cars um, much the same standard. Mm. Um, I don't think there was some, I don't think any of us chipped each other about the cars we had. Um. What major changes do you see in today's society? Oh, some changes are tremendous. Um, one of the things, of course, is women going out to work. When I was a kid, that um, women's space was at home. Very few, did, very few of the women went out to work. Another thing that is the uh, relationship between men and girls uh, before. The boy would always open the door for a lady, and stand up and a lady came comes into the room, and um, he'd never wear a hat or a cap inside, he'd take it and off as soon as he came in. Um, he would, uh, if uh, we were sitting down in a room, a woman came in, uh, a lady came in, or if a girl came in, uh, he'd stand up until she was seated. Um, He certainly not no, as I said, most uh, women were in the home looking out for the children, the men went out to work. He's, um, you know, a tremendous number of other changes that um, I'm going to spot my time to do. I'm sorry. That's all right. What important lessons have you learnt in your lifetime? I think the most important lesson that I've learned is to show love to people. Uh, God say love and God's love is continually being put into our hearts and um, we should be showing that love, that agape love to other people as well. Um, some people can be selfish, you shouldn't, shouldn't be selfish, you should be loving, kind, gentle, and um, what important lessons have I learned in life? Um, um, make sure that I was going to pay your bills and um, carry on, but I think most important is, as I said, showing love to people and enjoying each moment, accepting each moment of life. Mm -hmm. Knowing that um, uh, my name. We go, we go to meet our Heavenly Father. That's enough. <laughs> what is the first major disaster that you can remember? It's the first major disaster in Victoria or Australia that you can remember. It's the first major disaster in Victoria or Australia that you can remember. Gosh, yeah, you should even be warning the first major disaster that I can remember. Um, I, uh, Frankly, I don't know. I think the major disaster that I remember was when I was a kid living up near Swan Hill. There was a, a busload of car loaded people that um, came and 
and the dogs got pumped because of this guy from Nile across the end of New South Wales. But, um, oh, there's an airplane crash, I don't know. Oh, also, um, did when you did you ever see the um Westgate Bridge fall or anything? No, I saw pictures of it. That was a bad one. Oh, okay. And did you know anyone um that was killed in any unfortunate accident or anything? Sorry, sorry. What was the first um house that you can remember that um you bought when you were married? First house, it was a Book the Leo house in Woburn Street with Zanna. Uh, the road was not made and it was in, in the brain we had to leave the car up the top of the hill. Um, we had a house about halfway down the hill and um, the, road, the road itself and the footpath were very slippery. But the house was, as I say, Book the Leo, it was a very common brick. And um, we had two bedrooms, and um, we had a lovely vegetable garden out the back. I guess I did a lovely vegetable garden out the back. <laughs> and the um, house is still there. We go past it every now and then. And, yep. Yeah. Um, we used to have a big fence along the front. The fence is now falling down. and. Um, <laughs> Mm -hmm. What are your opinions on war? Like, what, what, what? Do you think it should have occurred, or it should not have occurred, and why? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just the but war. But first, they all write down their history. People wage war against each other, and the people. Even individuals fight against each other, and the nations fight against each other, and the end of the day, people, nations are fighting against each other. And we can need to look at Bosnia or the Middle East and um, India and see uh, what's going on there, of course, Ireland. Um, that's my view of it. Uh, well, um, Theoretically, of course, being a Christian, uh, we shouldn't have war. And we should try and live in peace and harmony one with the other. It would be an ideal uh, life, an ideal situation. But um, unfortunately, um, in the individuals uh, having disagreements, and the only way that some of those seem to be able to be rectified is by fighting. Uh, so with um, nations, um, it seems to be the only way that uh, to be resolved is by fighting. Um, and, and I think can't say anything in the uh, preference for, for wars. Um, just a lot of, um, what else I say, there have always been wars, and usually the cream of the young um, people of the uh, particular country that gets killed. And um, I suppose it's one way of um, keeping the population down, but um, <laughs> uh, we can't say much positive side for that. Mm. And also, did you know anyone close to you, like a best friend or your mate or your, your mate's dad or something like that, who actually died in the war? Yes. Um, I don't know what was it. You'd be speaking to a chap one day and they go out on a patrol and um, we just didn't come back. And um, that's what happened to, I suppose, my best friend in the army. And, um, Probably just been wounded, and then a few days later we were driving along um, a you know, hundred yards further along where we had been camped. Here on the side of the road there's a little mound with a cross on the top of it, and we had so and so, so and so, and then the name of the person we see who happened to be my best mate. Um, and of course, I suppose everybody that I was with knew the chap and um, the driver of the jeep 
said, right, Dad, Captain, you're the senior bloke around here. Shouldn't you say a prayer or something? But um, uh, everywhere you went, there were little mounds of um, bodies in it. And um, quite often, the Japanese or maybe more often Australian. Okay, thank you, Poppy and Re um, Reverend Philip Revet Cook. And thank you for your time and thank you for being so cooperative. Thank you, Gavin, and thank you, Becky.